All right, then, Dan, how you doing? Not bad, how are you? Yeah, pretty good. Played a gig, that was always good fun, so... Yeah, I heard, heard yeah. from one of your mates. So reeling from that gig? Yeah, it was great fun. I'm going to get out and play a lot more now. Yeah, thanks. Got the bug, yeah. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, playing live, it's uh, it's an interesting animal, isn't it? It definitely is. There was uh, drunk people sitting on my guitar case. There was all kinds of things going on. But, yeah, it was good fun. Lots yeah. Of people dancing and having fun, so... It's funny with music; it always sort of, in my mind, it steps up a little bit. You, you learn in the bedroom, out of sight and out of mind of everybody else, and uh, kind of so you've got your private time to sort of play and practice and everything. Then you end up sort of jamming with friends. That's like it feels like a big step up. Yeah. And then when you get like four or five guys in a room together to rehearse, the pressure ramps up again. And then there's the gigs. You know, yeah. once you get to the, the gig, it, it's like you're juggling about 10 different balls at once. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. And I sometimes think, you know, although maybe the pressure in some respects may be less, it's sometimes, I think, tougher mm. playing when you're playing clubs and pubs because you're often playing to people that may or may not appreciate what you're doing. Yeah. And true. they may appreciate it depending on how much they've drunk. Yeah. As you found out with the drunk guy sitting on your <laughs> guitar case, they usually don't respect your gear. That's clearly obvious. They think you can play anything and yeah. sing anything. Yeah, you're open to requests. Yeah. That's it. You thought like, rhythm is a dancer. Hang on a minute, we're a three piece rock band. What made you think we could do a nineties dance track? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, exactly. You, you name it, they will they will try your patience. My favourite one that punters do at gigs is when right in the middle of your solo, when your concentration needs to be at its maximum, they want to talk to you. Oh, yes. Why, why is yeah. this? Do you know? <laughs> I'm in the middle of a solo. <laughs> go away. Yeah, leave me alone. Are you finished? Can you go now, please? <laughs> <laughs> talking, talking about shred, shred, let's have a little look at um, some things to do with that maybe today, sort of scale choices and things like that, if that's a good yeah, I, I think that's a good a good call. Something I'd like to throw in there as well, along with with the scale choices, is grace notes. Oh, nice! What are they? They're notes that belong to Grace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. Grace notes. Well, well the amazing Grace notes. They are, <laughs> yes, incredible. In fact, but it's interesting that you should ask what are Grace notes because that in itself is is something that then clearly needs answering. Yeah, I think I know. I think isn't it? Where you play a note before you play the main note as such. Kind of, yeah. It's often when we maybe choose to slide into notes or sort of hammer on into notes. So less attack and everything like that. So yeah, it is essentially, you're, you're right, where you're coming into your, your main note, your main kind of note of choice from, from a different place. What brought it to mind was I was watching a little video on, on YouTube and I was sort of... I forget for the life of me who, who the guy is. I think it's a German guy who who does quite a lot of um, sort of videos on YouTube, sort of for of tuitional purposes and so forth. And he's he's quite clued in. And he talked about grace notes, and I thought, well, that's a great idea because that's something I've I've not really kind of you know I know I do it, I know I yeah. don't think about it, but it's not something that everybody always wakes up in the morning and goes, you know what, got to work on those grace notes. Okay, cool. It doesn't work like that, so. Let's maybe start with sort of a fairly standard blues. We're not going to use a backing track. We'll just play some chords for you, I think. We'll keep it simple. Okay. Right. And then after that, we're going to have a little look at some interesting scales. But we'll spend a little time looking at these grace notes because they really are sometimes the difference between sounding really professional with what you do and maybe sounding a little bit a little bit amateurish and not kind of understanding why. Okay, yeah. So I'm going to do a simple sort of blues in A. Yep. And I want you to just have a jam over the top. Yep. And we're going to see what comes out. Okay. Okay.
Okay. I'm trying to play Grace notes, but <laughs> so what do you feel was the, the good bits of, of that performance from the point of view of the Grace notes? Um, some of the sliding, some of the slurs, maybe. Um, just using a few chromatic notes and then moving into it a little bit. Okay. Some of the bends, some of the bends were a bit off. Because but... using a sort of slide in itself isn't necessarily a grace note per se. Say I was playing a lick or something yeah. like that. I could play it straight. Or... Cool. So I could slide into the the top note eighth round the top yeah. and then that seven has become a grace note and the six has become a grace note as well yeah. see when you slide into things sometimes we slide from a definite note yeah so if the sliding is maybe an integral part of the lyre or something like that yeah the sliding is all part of the lick. Here we're just using it as a way just to sweeten what we do. Yeah, okay. You know, if you're a kind of guy who likes sugar in your tea and your coffee, you know, sometimes tea or coffee without can be just a little bit... Mm, it's the same cup of tea or coffee. Yeah. But it just doesn't go down quite as easily. Yeah. Or quite as well. And it's the same sort of thing when we're talking about grace notes. They kind of sweeten the deal they sweeten the the lick that you're playing, so there's a there's a kind of a bit more a bit more to it. Yeah, a little bit more feel. It's a little bit less brash. You know, if I go like this, yeah, you know, it's like somebody coming into a conversation and just making a bold statement and disappearing again. Yeah. Whereas if I go, yeah, it's it's like. Yeah, no. Easing the yeah. words into a conversation. Do you understand what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, I do. Totally. Yeah. yeah. So like when trying you... to listen to the other person, possibly, or or like making your points with a bit more accented. Yeah. Passion. You you can also you can do an awful lot when you do <clears throat> grace notes in terms of an awful lot for yourself in terms of sort of adding a bit of a bit of feel to it mm. if done right. You know, people talk about feel. <clears throat> I guess feel is as much about sort of timing and knowing what to play when and how to make it sound really great. Yeah. You know, you can play the notes. You know, when I was a teenager in my crazy misspent youth and I was into all the shred guitar stuff and really wanted to shred like the the big boys like Ingve and everything, I would go and get a book and I would sit there and go, I understand it. I do understand the notes. I understand what's going on here. And I would learn all of the notes. Yeah. But as we said before, merely learning the notes, if you go and buy a Queen book and you learn all the notes, doesn't magically turn you into Brian May. No, that's right. Because... There's a lot more going on. There is, and it's that that person's touch on the guitar, the way they approach the guitar, which is individual to them. You can play the notes. It's nice to play the notes. And certainly if you work hard... You can use the different sort of vibe and feel that people have got, the way they go into notes using grace notes and so forth, to elevate your playing to a better place. But penultimately, you want to sound like you. Now, there are some people who have quite a sort of go-for-it guitar style that is quite brash in places, and that's their trademark. Mm. And if that's you, or if that's what you need to do on a track, that's fine. You think of Neil Young, for example... He can be quite strident with what he plays. Yeah. You know, it's it's like I'm serving you up the song, the song is good, here's my guitar with no airs and graces, bosh. And there's a certain kind of charm about that. Yeah. You know, and if that's your style, or if that's what's required, that's great. But extending it to the greater vocabulary of music, which encompasses all sorts of things. Mm. There's probably more often than not more times when actually playing with maybe a little more subtlety might be an advantageous thing to do. Yeah, a little bit of slur here and there. That's yeah, sliding into notes. You know, if, if I'm teaching a person who's not really a jazz guitar player, because I'm certainly not, um, how to be a jazzer, one thing I teach is is try and slide into notes. And... Good 
It's just yeah. the, the the act of sliding into the. Immediately sounds a lot more jazzy than if you're bending. Yeah. Whereas if you were playing for sort of something bluesy, you might put more sort of bends in there. Yeah. If you follow. So let's have another round again. I want you to just <coughs> look at your lips, look at what you're playing, and rather than chance the opportunities, I want you to look for opportunities mm. of getting to notes in a different way. So maybe it will be a slide, maybe just from a, a fret below. Even if you think that note's out of tune, that mm. doesn't matter because your note is soon going to be in tune. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you're listening on SoundCloud or iTunes and you want to check out what we're doing, don't forget to come to our YouTube channel, tune in, tone up, uh, and you can find the whole video there. You can see what I'm doing. It, yeah. <laughs> sense, if that it? helps. <laughs> if that helps. Yeah. Okay, let's have another go. <laughs> Nice grace notes and stuff. That's Moments right. Of slightly <clears throat> funky notes, I suppose. So. Sometimes you can slide down into to a lick as well. Yeah. Things like that where you slide below the note you want. Bend back up. Bend up. I like that. <laughs> Stop, so your country double stops. Kind of sound if you were definitely playing in a blues style, 
And then you move to a jazz style, but over a blues for a short while, and then over to a country style, and then back to the blues. Does that create a... I think it all depends on what you want to kind of create. When I listen to a a backing, you know, if I'm not kind of playing with a band where we're improvising a little bit and taking it where we want, in which case you could feasibly do all that kind of stuff. If I'm listening to a backing track or even sometimes just a set of chords is enough to kind of, and and a groove sort of evokes a certain kind of vibe, doesn't it? You know, if I play this sort of thing... We're thinking jazz. Yeah. The music's all about tension and release, so can you? I guess you could create a bit of tension by playing uh, the wrong, if you like, genre, but showing that you can go into the right one as well. You could certainly be bluesy on that. Can you? Yeah. And just add hints and flourishes of jazz. Minus seven there. So you do get the thing which is in between, which is like, yeah, 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 blues, jazz, jazz, blues. Yeah. Uh, rock, yeah. jazz, jazz, rock. Yeah, you can sort of <laughs> dive from one to the other a little bit, can't you? Yeah, so I mean, you can you can keep blues very straight, pentatonic and blues scale. <laughs> Or you can start including notes from the Dorian and get a little more jazzy, and maybe a few chromatic passing. Yeah, yeah, or you can give it a bit of a country flavour. Instead of going to the major because we we're in a minor there, yeah, I purposefully didn't bend quite that high. I so went up to the minor. I mean, with, with that sort of country style, I think you. You know, you could certainly get away with it over a kind of country ballad. Yeah. It might sound a bit strange if you dumped that in with something jazzy. Mm. You know, if you if you listen to something that's very jazz blues, then yeah, you could sort of cross pollinate those two styles quite nicely. Yeah, maybe country and blues and a few other things. But interesting, yeah. interesting ideas for you can always experiment. And release, yeah. And talking of tension and release, perhaps we should look at some interesting scales. scales. Please, yeah. So we, we looked at some grace note ideas. So in short, this is really coming to our target note from elsewhere. So, you know, if, uh, as I said before, if we're coming from up above. Or down below. Or even a sort of a hammer on into it from a note below, you know. Yeah. And, and like you said at the very beginning about uh, people having their own styles as well, people aren't going to tab that out exactly, are they? Not so always, or they'll hear the main try notes, to, you know. But they're not going to get the whole thing. There, There is something in music... 
yeah. referred to as, and I hope I get this right because I don't want to be lambasted here, but there is a, there is a thing called an arpeggiatura. Oh yeah, yeah, which is like yeah, yeah, which is yeah. referred to, I believe, as a musical ornament. Is what yeah. they call it. And this is where you play a note which falls outside of your key, but you kind of resolve, again, back to your tension and release, and you resolve back to the good note. Yeah. So this will come into play, especially when we're looking at these scales as well. But, you know, if you were playing, for instance, something in A, like we were, yeah. but say we use the G sharp. Yeah. And we use that as our grace note. So it's major minor seven. Yeah. Sounds pretty nice. I used the B flat there as well. Because really we're on it for such a short time, yeah, yeah. such a, a sort of nanosecond of time. We don't really have time for our ears to pick up on on it. Show me how discordant it will sound if you stayed on it too long. Okay. Yeah. And the B flat. Oh yeah, it's nasty, isn't it? Really nasty. <laughs> yeah. But if you pass yeah. through them quickly and you use them maybe as a, as a sort of a stepping stone for your you know, as your grace note into into the note you so want to play over the top. Yeah. It works. Okay, that's great, yeah. So we're going to look at some interesting scales. And when I say interesting scales, I'm sure some of you may be playing these already, but we're just going to try and put an interesting spin on it and try and connect things together. So the yeah. first one we're going to look at is the harmonic minor. Okay, cool. Now, the harmonic minor scale is very closely related to the natural minor scale. Yeah. For those who are either understand getting to understand their theory or like the theory behind it, if you take a major scale yeah. and you look at the modes of that major scale, so in the case of C, if you play from C to C, that is a mode in itself. That is, Ion that is Ionian mode. Okay. Now, if you go up to the sixth part, the sixth point in that scale yeah, the sixth note which will give you an A <laughs> yeah. and you play all the notes from C major but now starting on A that's the Aeolian mode basically A natural minor A B C D E F G back to A again yeah now that's the A natural minor scale it's the relative minor from C major if you were to take the seventh note in that scale the last note which is a G the G, yeah. A, B, C, gotcha. D, E, F, G, raise it by a semitone, yeah. you would do two things. For one, you'd be playing the major seven instead of the dominant seven or yeah. minor seven. The other thing you would be doing is you'd be putting now a three fret jump between the penultimate note hmm. and the final note of the scale before returning to the octave. So let's see. Is it like this? No, missed it. There we are. Mm, no, not quite right. So you, can, you put the major six in there. So oh yeah, yeah, that's what's going on. So yeah. yeah. Or you can play it on the full fret of the top string, which is a little bit easier. Yeah. Now with the harmonic sc minor scale. Just raising that note, a semitone, brings on a completely different flavour. Yeah. Now, on its own, it's it's sort of okay. If we were playing over something which was minor... You can play the minor, you can play any of the minor scales, can you? Melod melodic, harmonic, or... We do. could do, but some are going to sound better than others. So what we're going to do, we're going to start with just playing it. If you could give me sort of something in just over A minor, be fine. And I'm just going to play harmonic minor.
So it's okay, yeah. but there's an oddness about the G sharp, yeah. as you would expect, because yeah. it's not really properly fitting in. <laughs> now, you could use it almost like the arpeggiatura idea, yeah. where it's maybe part of a melody that's slightly strange, you know. <laughs> cheat I used is over E minor where I went to the G note yeah as opposed to G sharp so you could use it in that respect that would be the major third and it would sound, it would clash a bit too much with it so yeah the, so we played the minor third and yeah it worked so now it's your turn if I play you some chords to have a go at sort of Like that. Hitting the wrong things there. Uh, yeah. So you could use it like that as a kind of a slightly strange kind of flavour. Yeah, I gotcha. But another way of using it is by taking a mode from it. Yeah, okay. Now, as you yourself said, it's the major third of E. Yeah. Now, actually, if we use E as our tonal centre, right. and we play A harmonic minor starting and ending on E, that's basically our new mode. Yeah, okay. We get Phrygian dominant, sometimes referred to as the Spanish Phrygian. Yeah. So we've now got so. E, F, G sharp, A, B, C, D, E. So it'd be like... Uh... can actually use it in quite a lot of different situations yeah okay so if you've got something where you want a kind of spanish kind of vibe almost <laughs> okay we're on electrics but it'll work electrical <laughs> So yeah, so you could then resolve it. You can also mix it in with your other stuff that you've got going on in A minor. So if you mix it in with the natural minor, so you've got the option.
Andy Wood. Andy. <laughs> it's the, almost uh, a little bit Aldi Miola, I think, isn't Aldi it? Aldi Miola, yeah, 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 why not, yeah. But you get all those sort of sounds, which work in the, the sort of Spanish kind of idiom, but also if you're playing over a more metal kind of groove, yeah. that works. <laughs> something which is none more black and metal tastic it yeah. does kind of work for those metal moments okay cool yeah, yeah yeah so you can also use it there yeah okay now spinning this on its head for a while let's have a look at the melodic minor shall we okay yeah good plan yeah so. oh actually i tell a lie we need to look at the dorian sharp four. Oh yes okay yeah so People don't always make the relation, the co-relation from one scale to the next, beyond like your relative major minor. They don't always understand the, the relationship between scales. And I do think it's, it's pivotal, it's fundamental, because there are so many things in music where if you learn one thing, it's transferable. Yeah. Yeah, if you learn all the chords in the key of C, well, that's then transferable to the key of A minor. Yeah. And yeah, so on. Yeah. Um, if you make a few tweaks, you have a whole bunch more chords. If you're thinking of, of the A harmonic minor, which displaces just one note, mm. if you find any of the chords in the key of A minor mm. with a G in it and now make it a G sharp, just like it does with the e, e major chord in that key, whereas before it would be an E minor key, gotcha. e, e minor oh, chord, yeah. sorry. Um, do that with every chord, you get a fun and interesting array. So F actually becomes F minor. Yeah. If you if you ditch the A, you can you have ditch either. The a, you can have either. A sharp. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. G, oh, G sharp. D ditch yeah. the you have G sharp. Yeah. And that now actually the harmonic minor can be played over that. Now that might seem unrelated and a bit strange, but there are so many songs that if we're relating it back to C major, you've got the C. And then it goes to F minor. Yeah. And resolves back to C again. Your tension and release you were talking about. And you could like harmonic minor shred over that. slightly to match the chord yeah yeah so there's lots of lots of interesting things you could do with that i suppose with other th the other thing as well is occasionally you could augment it it's a weird sounding chord isn't it so normal c going 
Possibilities afoot. Um, I think when we go to the F minor, there, it wants to play the B flat as well. It actually wants to play the E flat. Yeah. Oh, okay. Major right. chord, which yeah. does have the A flat in it. That's even weirder. Um, but yeah, so when you go to the F minor, actually that's what it wants to play. But as I say, from a technical standpoint, if you're thinking in the key of of, of A minor, but you're thinking A harmonic minor, yeah. F minor would actually be a possibility. Yeah, okay. Strange, but true. So let's look at maybe this, this Dorian Sharp 4. So when we hear these expressions, what does it mean, Dorian Sharp 4? So for me, you take the Dorian mode. Uh, see, when, when you first said this to me earlier, I was thinking Dorian mode, that's the second mode in the scale, so it'd be A up to a B, it'd be a B, Dor anyway, anyway, that's barking up the wrong tree. But of course you're in minor now, yeah, exactly. so it's all different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the so Dorian is, is a minor mode, technically speaking, and all those taken from the major modes, it's got a minor third in it. So yeah. it, it's basically, as if it was a normal Dorian scale, a normal Dorian mode scale, and the fourth note you was whatever it was. Six, you, you, well, if you're Dorian sharp four, it means you're going to sharpen the fourth note fourth, yeah. in the Dorian scale. So in the key of D, using yeah. the same notes, which is a harmonic minor, but we're going to now start on D, but the notes that are the same. Because we've now got D, E, F, G sharp, A, yeah. B, C, D. Now, how do I know this fits over the blues? Well, for a start, the fact it's Dorian should give you a clue. Yeah, yeah. And all it does, really, it's basically like having the Dorian scale mixed with your blues scale because you've got the what would be otherwise termed as the flattened fifth, yeah. which is actually our sharp four. Yeah. So the A flat, G sharp. Um, but all that's missing is whereas Dorian would normally have a normal fourth note, which would in this case be a G, our G has been swapped out for the G sharp. Yeah. So we're missing the G. Now, again, this creates some interesting stuff and some very interesting licks. Do you want me to give you a kind of Dorian band? Go for it. Make it groovy. <laughs> I'll try. Groovy. <laughs>
Groovy. <laughs> so I mixed it up with a few things, but let's go through some maybe some of the ideas that we're we're looking at. And I think mixing up with other scales, mixing things up with other scales, really helps make things usable. Okay. Yeah. Because when you get a scale that's slightly odd, you can't necessarily whip it out at every yeah. inopportune moment and go, oh, I have some of that. Yeah. Then you sound like Vernon Reed, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, I love Vernon Reed's playing. It's really off the wall. Yeah. But sometimes it's just going to make the audience kind of go, oh. A bit jarring, yeah. It's meant to be, and it's yeah. cool for that reason. But, you know, a whole sort of solo of it, even sometimes for some, is too much. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so I would usually mix, like, my harmonic minor ideas, the Dorian Sharp four ideas, with straightforward Dorian mode. Yeah. Okay. So we're still in A minor harmonic, really, aren't we? A harmonic minor, but now our tonal centre is moved from it's E to D. D. Yeah. So one of the things I like about it is it's diminished kind of sound. It's got a very diminished sound about it. And what you're doing, you're pl you're, you're playing around the pentatonic scale as well, so that's. Well, I'm missing out some like... of the notes, but this is definitely using most of the, the note ideas from the, the Dorian Sharp form. So I've got there. So I've skipped from the 10 to the 13 on the bottom string. Five arpeggio as well, isn't it? Basically, yeah. yeah. Which then kind of dovetails into your sort of um, ar arpeggio substitutions that you're. Yeah, we'll come. We'll about. come back and have a look at that a bit more another time. Yeah. So then, from there. Seems it blues now. So I've gone to the ten on the top string. Oh, I'm a little bit lost. Thirteen, twelve. Then bend from the 16th to the 17th at the end. There you go. So we've got. That kind of idea, yeah. yeah. Okay. So it really <laughs> drums up the, the kind of like um, diminished sound, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Big time. Does, yeah. Almost like a diminished sound figure. <laughs> Yeah. You know. Yeah, what is... I mean, that right there is the diminished arpeggio. Hiding in plain sight. 13 on the G, 12 on the B, 10, yeah. and then 13 on the trumpet. Uh, 
Is that the note that's not? C. So, yeah, the C is the rogue. Yeah, okay, gotcha. And sometimes I put the A in it as well, where it should be a G sharp up here, though. That is resolving in itself by bending up there. Yeah, or you could go into a straight sort of Dorian leg, you know. Yeah. Yeah. throw something like that in because people don't always understand the relationship between the diminished sound yeah. and the and the blues but actually if you look it's at the, the top note, of your sort of Dorian yeah. mixed with blues scale even without the, the sharp four yeah. you've got the A flat which is your flat five blues note yeah. and you've got the B which is your sixth and yeah. you've got your D which is your fourth yeah that should diminish. So that final note is bending from the blues note. Yeah. And that's something else I wanted to talk about in terms of getting an unusual sound. Thinking of the, the sort of Marty Friedman way of doing things. Yeah. He often bent from quite unusual notes. and You could get some really great effects by doing this, especially by using scales like this. And then, and then getting... <laughs> Sounds. Yeah, that's kind of almost Japanesey sounding things, which he's right. known for as well. Yeah, so you can do Very that. Cool. Introduce yeah. the bar. <laughs> <laughs> it's just something to think about. I mean, it's yeah, a bit nice. of a bit of a weird thing, but you know, when you you think about your Marty Friedmans and your Jeff Becks, your people who kind of manipulate notes in very unguitary ways, sometimes, yeah, you get some really interesting stuff come out. Yeah, yeah, that's. And when you that's include the trem bar, you know, you can really kind of shape the transition from note to note. <laughs> You can dip that trem bar a little lower, bring it up, and then bung a bend on the end, and it sounds like you bent from a far, far, far farther place away. <laughs> Sat down with that 
trend bar. For I obviously didn't go out when I was a boy. <laughs> <laughs> I've, uh, uh, every now and again, I dip into the trend bar. Oh, hey! But um, <laughs> I, don't, uh, I definitely don't use it enough. Trim oh, ten. I see. So like that. So yes, yeah, so you should bring that bar up <laughs> and then carry on bending up. Yeah. And it sounds like you've got like the everlasting bend. So let the trim come up first. Okay. She's starting to trim now. Yeah. Oh, I should have. And um, then you can bring 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 should the. Have, uh, um, should have started. It's hard to get it sort of. People often think you've got to really start low with the trim. Yeah, okay, you don't but have to start you, that low. No, they're, they're, you know, even a trim is sort of fairly modest travel. Yeah. You know, like the, the PRS trims don't have an amazing amount of travel both ways. It's just enough. No, no, no. no that's but, fine. you know, you can get it to... Give you enough there. I think where a lot of my, my trim technique, I think where a lot of my trim technique comes from, is I grew up through the eighties. Yeah, yeah. When didn't a guitar, apart from a Les Paul or an SG or a Tele, have a trim? Yeah, exactly. You know, I grew up on Floyd Rose trim systems, and with Floyd Rose system, if you get a good Floyd Rose system properly set up, it's got a massive range on it. The yeah. stuff you can do with it is immense it's an amazing piece of kit if you can make it work for you sadly too many people kind of got it and just went oh, warble and did nothing else with it yeah. but actually you know if you if you want anything from sort of weird alien weird alien noises to pops farts and screams you know the, the floyd rose will, will do it especially one with the recess and so i got quite used to manipulating the trim system and i didn't really think about it i just put some time into making it sound really cool because it's very easy to make trim tricks sound very trashy. Also, yeah. I kind of resent it when people call it a trick because, you know, a trick is something David Copperfield does. You know, yeah. It's a technique. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a technique. It's, it's something which is there to kind of sort of add something to the if music. If it's a trick, it would be easy. <laughs> Indeed. Pick a card. Yes, yeah. yeah, not. So, <laughs> yeah. so that's one of the things that you, you can do is sort of use the trim to to kind of drum up that that sort of vibe. Yeah, okay. Um, All good stuff. There, there's a really great Joe Satriani album. Oh, what's it called now? It's on the tip of my tongue. Yeah, but it's main one. It is. It was. It was an album with a real kind of live vibe, and it was one after Flying in a Blue Dream, I think. Ah, oh, right. Okay. Um. Well, we can always look it up, can't we? <laughs> we could look it up. I think we ought to. Let's let's have a look. Yeah. The Extremist. The, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shouldn't. And there was a song from The Extremist. And I think, it, I think it might have been a song called War. Yeah. And the stuff that he does with the trem is amazing. Yeah. Like, it's, it's super cool. There's your homework, Gary. <laughs> There's your homework, Gary. Check it out. Joe Satriani, it out and, War uh, from the Extremist album. It's a fantastic <laughs> track. It's really, really great. 
Um, I'm going to show you sort of one other kind of maybe odd scale choice that you can use. Yeah. Now, this is a weird one. I mean, there's, I might have time for one more after that. Let's see how we go. Yeah, okay. So, with this one, we take a normal, good old-fashioned pentatonic scale. I'm just going to move this box. Apologies. Oh, it just keeps resonating with my amp. I don't know if that's any better. So, that's a normal pentatonic scale we know and we love. We're in D minor still, yeah? D minor, D demented, yes. What we're going to do, we're going to take every root note and we're going to put it a semitone lower. So every D. Every D. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Now it's a pretty weird scale. So the Ds have been replaced with C sharps. So in theory, a 12 bar or something similar, it could work quite well over the A chord, which has a C sharp as its yeah. um, major third. Yeah, okay. But also, we can use it tension and release. Well, I, uh, I was playing for your the vamp earlier. I was playing at uh, D minor and A9. So G9. G9, sorry. If I went up to an A, yeah, yeah. Are you into the A9? Apologies. <laughs> So you can resolve to the D. What's even cooler is if you maybe use the C sharp as a passing note too. Okay. So you can do that. So maybe if you could vamp me up. Uh, same thing. Whatever you feel in the key of D. Right, Make it funky. sharp sometimes I'm actually playing the scale itself yeah sometimes I'm resolving in it so it's sort of resolving oh, to the D great note C sharp to D yeah. okay. it's one of those things that otherwise you wouldn't think of doing yeah but actually over the A 
Sorry, crap example. <laughs> Using that C as a springboard is also an interesting proposition. Yeah, yeah cool. So what I would suggest is when you go to sort of play over something, maybe think of other options of playing over things. All right. Because some of these things are very easy to implement. You know, if you've if you've got the harmonic minor mode the, the Dorian fingers. sharp four yeah <laughs> if you've got that one under your fingers you can quite easily slip from even the blue scale <laughs> And the Dorian into it, just by changing a few things. Yeah. Same with the other scale. Really good. Mm, so just get inventive with it. I don't find there's place all over the set for it, but if you've got something like you you were doing there where there's maybe some kind of vamp, you know. <laughs> It gives you quite a good, Brilliant. a good alternative vibe. So sometimes, if you're if you're playing away happily with your Dorian mode, just thinking G sharp, yeah. Pop it, pop it into the the kind of odd, odd kind of uh, Dorian sharp four. <laughs> Yeah, cool. Yeah, you know, and you got that. Wow. Right. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the shred face. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, yeah, you got all the diminished stuff. 
Which is in that, you know, yeah. taken from their sharp force. <laughs> I did a bit of a cheat because I used the outside, the two outside strings of the. Oh, of the I see. Yeah. Yeah. So that kind of. Yeah. Yeah. And then leaps of three frets. Got it? Got it. String skipping. String skipping one. If you're going to pick every note, you've got to be quite accurate. I'm not even doing that. (laughs) (laughs) My uh, left hand is all over the place a bit. And it will still, although it sound quite jazzy, and quite a sort of fusiony, it will still fit over like your bluesy yeah. vamps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. just like a half diminished. Yeah. Like those half diminished runs. Thanks very much, Dan. No worries. Pleasure as always.